everybody. I'm glad to see you are here to sing and dance and entertain you and bring you lots of cheer. For all of us are a dandy. I'm glad, of course, you can rely. So hello, hello, everybody. We all welcome you, the Black Cat welcomes you. We are glad that you're here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and once again, I welcome you on behalf of the working staff of the Black Cat, the most famous bohemian bar in the world. I, you know, it's always rather exciting to see the various people that do come down to the Black Cat, because you find, you find wolves in sheep's clothing, shall we say. And of course, I always like to welcome the leather jacket girls, the queens that work so hard during the week. And then on Friday, they shed the Ivy League look and put on those gay leather jackets and those chains and they run up and down Market Street on their Vespas. I think it's just the end. <laughs> it's too much. Oh, it's so gay. Yes. Now, uh, what's wrong with you, Mary? I'm not supposed to hold this thing too close to me and that's rather hard for an old queen like myself. <laughs> oh! so delightful. How are you, my dear? It's been some time since I've seen you. And how are you? Very well, thank you. Thank you. And how are you? Where are you from, sir? Tell me. I love that hairdo. Milpitas. Milpitas. My goodness gracious. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Milpitas is that place that my German professor used to tell me where to... Oh, she's playing Mel Peters music. She's very gay, that girl. Is. Well, I remember once when I was taking German, a very advanced course in German, my teacher got very angry at me and he said, why don't you go to Mel Peters? Well, I went to Mel Peters. Best lay I ever had. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, and where are you from, sir? Where do you want to be? Oakland. You're from Oakland. My goodness. How did you get over here now that we don't have the ferry system anymore? <laughs> I don't understand it. Over with a queen. Oh, I see. And where are you from, sir? Oakland. You're from Oakland, too? My goodness, we have a lot of Oakland girls coming over here. It's just too much. Just move your bun. Yes, thank you. And where are you from? Oh, excuse me. Oh, my goodness. Where are you from, sir? Estabula, Ohio. Ohio? My Estabula, Ohio! My goodness gracious! Where in the hell is that located? Did you hear about the black cat in Estabula, Ohio? You did? Isn't that bad? <laughs> My goodness! There must be at least one queen in Estabula, Ohio. That's all I got to say. Oh, glory. And at this table here, I want to welcome these lovely, these are my neighbors, you know. I, I went and bought a small little hill in Fairfax. Over in Fairfax, they're already taking sides. Some of them are saying, oh, it's lovely Jose is going to live over here, and now we can see him perform, and we won't have to go to the Black Cat. And then there are those that are saying, oh, my God, she'll be running around in high heel shoes and kimonos. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got news for them. I bought a donkey, I'm like, hitching it up to the rickshaw, and I'm going to ride the hills that way. <laughs> I understand the latest sport in those mountains is you take your dog walking in the afternoon and drop in on your neighbors for coffee. Well, I'm going to hitch up my donkey, and I'm going to take him along with me. <laughs> I'm going to make sure I have ass with him. <laughs> Thank you for getting that one. And how do you do my, this is my ballet teacher. He's the young man that keeps me stretching like a virgin at 40. <laughs> That's very difficult to do. You know, ladies and gentlemen, 
Oh, you have a very attractive bracelet. I have one similar to it, my dear. Yes. Um, oh, now you're there. You are bumping glasses. Do you know her? Vaguely. Vaguely. You, you, uh, did you, have you always worn glasses? Uh, not always. Not always? When did you have to wear them? How old were you, may I ask? About 13. 13? Makes me think of a little story. <laughs> Johnny was caught masturbating by his mother, and she was quite upset about this, you see, because it's a habit that one should not acquire, at least continue. <laughs> yeah. Well, at any rate, she thought a while, and finally she approached her son. She said, Johnny, you must not do this or you will become blind. And he thought a while and he said, well, Mother dear, can't I do it until I need glasses? <laughs> so you can see. At 13, he stopped. <laughs> Charming, where are you from, my dear? San Leandro. San Leandro. My aunt's third husband was from San Leandro. He was a police officer over there. And then he came over to San Francisco, and this is during the time of Prohibition, and they caught him making bootleg liquor in the basement. Oh, it was a scandal. The family had to go and hide out in the sand dunes until he came out of San Quentin, and then he became respectable. Chief of police or something like that. <laughs> oh, and where are you from, my dear? Argentina. Argentina. My goodness gracious. You are from the Pampas down there and all that sort of stuff, aren't you? Oh, isn't that gay? You have very beautiful eyes. And where are you from, sir? Where? Piedmont. Piedmont. How in the hell did Argentina get together with Piedmont? <laughs> It wasn't easy. <laughs> All I have to say is that was a mighty big stretch. <laughs> Ooh, caramba. And how are you, my dear? I haven't seen you since the Turkish baths days. Yes. <laughs> this girl, this girl and I, we used to tramp days. That was the, the Jack. That was it, Jacks. We used to run up and down the corridors until finally... They had to put in a new rug, and we kind of lost all interest in it. <laughs> Those were the good old days. Oh, and how are you, my dear? Hi. Yo, my goodness gracious. And where are you lovely people from? Oh, we're from here. You're from here. You have a slight accent, however. Oh, I'm from here. Yes. And where are you? Please take your hands out of your pocket. You were, we're fighting to save our license here, honey. I don't understand this. Yes, hands out of your pockets. Goodness gracious. You know, it's rather interesting. It's rather interesting when I approach people, they all begin to shiver and shake and carry on very mad like. Now this queen, take this queen here, for instance. She's all upset because she knows I'm going to ask her a question. Where are you from? Europe. Europe? Europe. Europe. Yeah. Whereabouts in Europe? Switzerland. Where? Switzerland. Switzerland. My aunt's fourth husband was from Switzerland. <laughs> yes, he was from the New Chatel. Do you know where New Chatel is? Il est parlé français et tu les choses comme ci comme ça. Formidable. He died. He left her very as he died. He left her quite wealthy. Uh, he was related to the Bengarels and Rickenbackers. Oh. Fabulous people. <laughs> Mary, your mother had to go to court to fight. That's all I have to say. <laughs> and how are you? It's very nice. I, I want to meet a real genuine beatnik. He's a genuine beatnik, and he's traveling with some very genuine beat. How are you? Fine there. This is Kazumoto. How are you, my dear? You're looking very gay today. And where are you from, sir? New York. New York. My goodness, how did you land in the black pussy from New York? That was easy. It wasn't easy? No. How's everything in New York these days? Chilly. It's cold, huh? How is gay life in New York? Not as good as San Francisco. Not as good as San Francisco. I have you know we've been fighting every step of the way. Los Angeles is quite confused now that the prostitutes are wild down there. <laughs> Garth, we don't have that problem here. We don't have that problem here. We have other problems. <laughs> yes, Dylan. And how are you? 
take your fingers out of your mouth. That's how I began. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Yes. Oh, yes. I always like, I always think of fraternity men when I see men with their pipes in their mouth. I think it's just so, so bad. Are you a fraternity man, may I ask? No. No. Do you belong to any kind of an organization? None that I admit. Here. You're not a minute man. No, no. No, you know, that was quite disastrous. There was the Queens of Los Angeles were going to organize like we organized here in the city, but they discovered them all too fast down there. It was a shame. Yes. Uh, where are you from, sir? Boston. My goodness gracious. I remember the Statler Hotel very well. That's in front of that park there. Oh, I've been in almost every one that's worthwhile. How are you, my dear? Fine. Is this your friend? Yes. And where did you meet him? San Francisco. San Francisco. True love found at the YMCA. <laughs> oh, I think that, that that's all right, darling. And these young boys with the um, white. Oh, I see we have Madame Pussycat today. How are you, my dear? Yes, she's the young lady that you find checking the garbage cans in back of the Emporium in the city of Paris. Yes, very gay girl. Uh, where are you from, sir? The one that's looking at Pussycat, yes, you. Where are you from? Your reputation shot to hell the minute you came in here, you know. You know, he reminds me of the gentleman that was very, act very, very active in his club. And one day, the club was going to have a speaker, a very guest speaker, speak to them. And all of a sudden, the guest speaker phoned up at the last minute and said that he was unable to come. And the subject that he was going to talk about was to be sex. <laughs> so the members asked George if he would kind of pitch hit for the speaker. And George says, well, I don't know anything about sex. How can I talk to the membership? And they said, oh, you can tell about your own experiences. So George got up and he held them at bay while he told them about his experiences. Everybody figured this was fabulous. Well, he came home that night and he told his wife that at the club, he was chosen to pitch hit for this guest speaker. And he was quite pleased. His wife says, well, my dear, what did you talk about? Naturally, he wasn't going to tell his wife that he talked about sex, so he said, yachting. She said, yachting. Well, she didn't give it much thought, and she rolled over and went to sleep. And the, about three days later, she's out at the supermarket shopping, and one of the members come over and says, uh, why, Hazel, I want to tell you that was a fabulous speech George made the other night at the club. And she says, yes, George told me about it, but I don't understand why he spoke on that subject. You know, he's only tried it twice. The first time he got sick to his stomach, and the second time he lost his hat. 